Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week's tutorial comes courtesy of Corey who requested a comprehensive overview of the Pathfinder tool in Illustrator. And the Pathfinder palette is super helpful and very time-saving once you begin using it. It's got a lot of different options as you can see. I've got these cheat sheets right here and they are totally free and you can pick them up over at every-tuesday.com. I'll leave a link on the screen and also in the video description. So be sure to click on that and you'll have access to these. You can print them out, use them for future reference if you ever need um, some quick tips or just want a refresher on how these work or just store them on your computer so you have them whenever you need them. Okay. So you can see that there's a bunch of different options right here and these cheat sheets I've put a little summary under each one so you will quickly know exactly what they do and as many as there are I actually only use two of these all the time all the rest it's so rare and very uncommon for me personally as a graphic designer however if you're an illustrator that works in vector format often I'm sure these would be extremely helpful for you so if that's your discipline then definitely get very familiar with these. So the Pathfinder palette, if you don't have it open, you can access it by going window Pathfinder and it'll pop open. And you can see these have two rows, shape modes and pathfinders. They're very similar, but I've broken these cheat sheets up so you've got them separated right here. So I'm gonna walk you through the unite and the divide and then I'll just briefly summarize all the rest of them just so you have a basic understanding of them. So I'm gonna come over here and you can see I've just got two triangles that are overlapping. And if you don't know how to create a triangle in Illustrator, it's actually super easy. You just grab your star tool over here and your star may look like this or or it may look like this, like this. Um, so all you have to do is hit the arrow down key and you can reduce the number of points or hit the arrow up key and increase the number of points. So that's how you create stars and triangles in Illustrator. So all I did was create two of these triangles and set them up back to back. So when I select all of these and I click Unite, you can see it merges them all together. I like using this a lot when I'm creating fonts or playing around with typography or just shape building in general. It's really helpful to be able to just put objects together seamlessly so you can create different things at the same time and you don't have to feel that pressure of getting it all right in one fell swoop. You can do two separate pieces and then unite them together. And once you start using this, you'll start noticing all the times when it comes in handy and really saves you a lot of time. So that is Unite. So over on the Divide, Divide is basically the exact opposite of Unite. So I'm just going to bring this over here and all I have to do is hit Divide right here. I use this one all the time as well. And whenever you use Divide, it actually groups everything together. Even though you're dividing all the shapes, it's kind of um, contradictory but you have to ungroup these in order to access all of your different pieces. So just hit Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G on a PC, and then you can separate all of your individual pieces and use them for whatever you need. Um, so that is Divide. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you very quickly through all the rest of these so you just have a basic understanding, and if they're relevant to the type of work you do in Illustrator, then take note of them, get familiar with them, and I'm sure you will use them all the time and it'll save you a ton of time in the process. So expand subtracts all selected shapes from the backmost shape. So you can see the purple is the backmost shape right here, so it gets rid of all the blue, including the areas that overlapped it. And I've also included an outline column just so you can kind of understand the shape as an outline as well as a filled object. So intersect subtracts everything that does not overlap. So you can see this is the only part that overlaps, so that that's what's kept um, together once you use intersect. Exclude subtracts everything that does overlap. So this is the part that overlaps, so it's excluded and everything else is still there. Over here in the Pathfinder column, trim, I'm gonna show you how this one works. Let me bring it over here. And as you can see the outcome right here, if I hit trim, you can see, let me show you one more time. See how we've got these lines right here? If I go into outline mode, command Y or control Y on a PC, you can see all of these intersecting points. And as soon as I hit trim, it separates them. So I'll exit outline mode, command Y or control Y on a PC. And if you hit ungroup, because this just like divide groups things together, so you'll hit command shift G or control shift G on a PC, and now I can separate all of these pieces. So you can see that it removes any overlapping pieces or shapes. Since this was the overlapping area, it removes it by merging it all together. 
Merge works the exact same way. The only difference is you can see I've introduced a shape um, that's the same color as this purple. And merge works the exact same way as trim. However, if you have another shape that's the same color as one of your other shapes, it's going to merge those together instead of separating them. So you can see right here, it merged them together. So crop uses the top object to crop everything else. So it uses this blue object right here, which you can see in the outline. And if I hover over, you can see it's still there. And it crops um, everything else. So you can see it only kept the overlapped area. Outline is very similar to divide. I have never used this one, and I'm not even sure when I would use it. But how it works is just like divide, it divides everything, only it divides your outline instead of your actual shape. So now I've got a zillion little line segments that I can do anything with. Minus back, anything overlapping or behind the top object goes away. So this blue is my top object. It removes the overlapped area and all of the purple because the overlapped area includes purple. So that's why that's removed. And this is what you're left with. So that's a very brief overview of the Pathfinder palette. And definitely head on over to every-tuesday.com to pick up these free cheat sheets. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to every-tuesday.com for all of my other tutorials plus a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.